is up, you dumb pieces of shit. Not for though. New shop. New project for the new shop. Only suits it. So let's get into it. Five hours later. A few moments later. Son of a bitch! Blue 42! Ha ha! Woo! It's a little fucked up, but I think it'll be okay. It's a little fucked up. Not too bad. Alright, this is a little shop update number two. This is later on. The bike's all apart, got a bunch of parts and shit. Um, as you can see, we have parts cleaner. The welding setup's looking a little more together. Um, shit's still everywhere, but like, you know, got some whiteboards. That, 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 that. Lots of new additions, but slowly making progress on the shop. I think, honestly, the last thing is the flooring. I'll get rid of these, like, puzzle pieces with some, like, trim or something. But I'm not gonna shop. take off the trip trip clamps and we'll get those uh, everything's off wiring looks good this is a pain in the ass and this bolt is just stuck in there that's not coming out with any of the tools I have at least so we're just gonna leave it like that and it'll be okay I'm not gonna powder coat it or maybe I will if I know now nah, no one's gonna see that uh, other than that the forks, wheels, all that look good, and the bars. Everything's off, down to the frame. Now, let's get this thing sanded and ready for powder coat. <laughs> I think it can fit. <gasps> Fuck yeah, it fits. Shit. Close it before anything happens. Thank you.
All right, what I was trying to show in the video is there's these two like little notches in the um, place where the rings go. Um, there's one in each like ring. So you just want to make sure the top of the ring like squeezes together and just stays right there when you're putting the cylinder on. Um, and yeah, that's all you really need to know for that. And just make sure that the arrow is pointing out the exhaust and most of them will have like some indication for pointing um, out the intake and exhaust so it's normally like an arrow for pointing out the exhaust or it'll say say like uh, IN for intake and EX for exhaust something like that and if you're not sure you can always just look it up but yeah just make sure that the rings are the right distance and then for a four stroke uh refer to your manual for how like far apart the ring should be because they should be at least like 45 degrees or something like that um apart just staggered staggering your rings prevents uh oil from getting through and it just seals it off
We are replacing the reeds because as you can see there is a little gap at the top of them right there. This one's a little bigger. And the other side, but the other side still has like a little one in the middle. See it right there. And don't want that. So got some new power valve reeds and let's install those.
Okay, we're just gonna do a quick little run through of how to bleach your brakes. So, got some fuel in there. As you see, when I pull the lever, little bubbles will come up. And all you're doing is you're just getting the air out um, of the line, so it actually like can compress and push the um, the pistons, pushing the pads against the rotor. And uh, all you're gonna do, you're gonna hold this all the way down, and then. You're gonna open it on this little um, kind of valve right there. It's got a little no um, notch. And the back is a drum brake, so it doesn't have it on the back, but uh, all like disc brakes will have this where you just open it. But make sure you hold the, hold the front brake down all the way open it it'll shoot some air out or some liquid and um then close it and then you can let go so don't let go until you open and close it uh and you basically go until it's like a good flow of like brake fluid and you'll have to keep like refilling it every now and then but yeah that's all there is to it uh, i'll do like a little time lapse hopefully that'll help too You want to make sure you see those holes at the bottom. Make sure the fluid doesn't like go down there because then a bunch of air will get in and you have to bleed them all over again. But um, like it'll take a while sometimes or sometimes it won't take that long at all. Um, but yeah, just make sure you get all the air out and then um, it'll like start squirting like really far uh, once you've got it. And you'll know, like you can feel the actual pressure in the brakes now so like you got front brakes now um I'm editing this. This is a time lapse right here. Okay, that's like two seconds. This is how long it took me to undo all those damn freaking staples. This is a time lapse. Bam. All that time lapse. Wow. I did a lot of cleaning, took all this apart, uh, took the grip off, cleaned out the little plastic piece, and it was kind of like broken-ish. It was like almost melted at the end. I feel like that was kind of getting hung up, so I kind of left it off the edge of the bar a little bit. Um, and then I just cleaned all that out, um, cleaned the line out, and now it snaps back. So we're not getting hung up anymore. All right, now let's put the car back.
It is finally time. Carburetor's in, gas tank's on, oil is in. Let's see if she'll start. Psych, you thought, of course we're not gonna start. Okay, so I kicked it over and just didn't even sound like it wanted to. So I looked over everything and the spark seems really weak. So I like looked over all the grounds, still nothing. One thing I'm not supposed to be able to do is sit here and hold the spark plug and kick it over. This is what should happen when you, fuck where I go, when I'm grabbing the spark plug and we kick over the bike, this is what should happen. Ah, fuck. Um, notice the difference? One really hurts, and the other one doesn't. So, ordered up a new CDI, because I think that's the problem. I feel like it's gotta be, like the ground in the CDI is like losing all the um, current, and it's just not, not feeding enough through. Like I can see a spark, but it's just not powerful enough, so. We're going to try replacing the CDI, and I'm way over budget now. We have spent five, maybe, on this bike, and uh, it looks hella good, but not exactly what I initially planned. Okay, so while I'm waiting on the parts, I went ahead and checked over some things that I didn't check over as well as I should have. Um, that being said, I checked uh, piston ring gaps and piston, piston to cylinder wall gap. Uh, those are very important. Alright, for your cylinder, um, piston to cylinder gap, um, you're going to measure the cylinder and the piston, like the diameter of the piston from um, one side to the other. And you can do that with the multimeter or there's like a special tool for, tool for it, but um, I'm not rich enough to have that fucking $80 tool. Um, but for the cylinder, you've got this tool right here, which basically just squeezes in, you put it in the cylinder, and um, move around, find the like biggest area from the side you need to go. So like that. And then you twist it and it locks. And then all you're gonna do is measure that with the multimeter. And you don't like have to have one of these. You can literally just do it with the multimeter. That's what I've always done until I finally just got um, the set. But yeah, just measure um, the intake to exhaust and then vice versa that way. And do it for the top and bottom, make sure they're the same. Uh, and then piston measure um, it's like just front and back and you'll get some numbers and whatever you choose to put it in millimeters or inches so for the piston uh, 89.5 millimeters and that's in inches so basically you get your two measurements and to find the difference you subtract the cylinder minus the piston so you can do that in inches or millimeters whatever is easiest for you and you'll get your difference and you look at your specs and if that's in spec then you're good if that's not in spec then you're not good so uh, correct spec i am in like perfect spec uh, we got the piston piston with 89.92 and then a 90 millimeter cylinder and then subtract those and we get 0.0033 uh, and that's like perfectly in spec. So my cylinder and piston gap is really good. And then the ring gaps, are, you get one of these gauges and you measure the gap for the rings and um, make sure those are in spec. So once you get all of your numbers and you make sure they're in spec, then you're good. And my rings are 55, which I believe are also perfectly in spec. So all that's good. All we gotta do is Wait for parts. Took out the clutch and plates are totally fucked. Those got nothing left in them. 
Uh, everything else looks good. Uh, replacing both crank seals. Uh, this one I kind of damaged, like, taking it out. But it was still not that great. This one's just old. There's a rock. That's both crank seals. All right, we got boxes. Box parts. And parts equals parts. So, we're going to replace that junk with new junk. Side note, that thing around my neck, that's a sling. Because I broke my collarbone on that little tiny bike we saw earlier. So, you'll see that throughout the video probably. You don't really want to see it, so we'll just do a little magical transition. I like to call it snap. We're going to... Ow! She's finally done. I stripped some of the paint off this gas tank, but I'm gonna repaint it off camera because this video is already pretty long. And she's basically done. She sounded like she wanted to start, so she should be good. I set the carburetor with the idle screw and the fuel air screw to a spot that should be good. So it should be good to start. I'm gonna have to tinker with it a little more, but everything should be ready. And it should start. And I can take it for a little test ride, but this is all you're going to see of it, this video, if it starts. Because the video is pretty long, so I'm going to save it for another video. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some top speed, you know, test ride it a little bit. But this thing is very scary. It sounds like it's going to be a beast. So I'm kind of scared of it, but she should rip. So let's see if she starts. First, first start. Got the boot on. This on. Choke. I think that was pretty good all right well i will see y'all in the next video it's going to look together all the plastics on it that paint that for that gas tank is going to be redone it's going to look beautiful and we'll take it for a test ride but thank y'all for watching i appreciate it hopefully see y'all in the next one